Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kate and today I will be teaching you how to paint these easy, loose watercolor birch trees. Let's get started. Before we can paint in our birch trees, we first need to draw in our tree trunks to give us that guideline to know where to avoid painting. So we are just going to draw a couple tree branches very lightly coming down and they're not going to quite go off the page. So there's one and then I'm going to do a thinner one behind it. just barely comes in front of it, in front of that second one. And I'm gonna add one more over here that comes down pretty far. And I think I'm gonna add one more right over here. That's also gonna come down pretty far and just a little bit off the page right there. So it's going to be kind of like an angled inward type of a painting. So for this next step, I am going to be using my masking fluid to cover up the sections that I have my tree trunks. So I am going to take a brush that I really don't care much about. And I'm going to use this brush to fill up my trees just because masking fluid can be very hard on your brushes. So it's really good to use one that's cheap, like from the dollar store or just a brush that you've used a lot and now you've kind of set it to the side and you've moved on to some newer brushes. So all you have to do with the masking fluid is just load it up onto your brush and then just fill in the sections with a generous amount of the masking fluid. So anywhere you have the masking fluid, that is what is gonna get left completely white for us to work with after we paint in our pretty sunset behind it. So now you want your masking fluid to completely dry.
and then coming back to it and it should be good to go. So now that our masking fluid has completely dried, we can go in and we can paint in our sunset completely over the trees and we don't have to worry about our paint seeping through and ruining our white tree trunks that we wanna keep clean. So I am going to switch to my flat brush and I'm going to fill up my sky area with clean water. Again, I'm just going right over those trees and that masking fluid and it'll keep in place. So I'm gonna come down pretty far. I haven't drawn in my horizon line. I was just gonna kind of put it in place right above that last farthest away tree trunk. But if you'd like, you can draw in your horizon line if that'll help you just be able to know where to stop. All right, and I'm gonna switch over to my size 12 round brush and fill it up with some water. And I'm gonna go into my yellow, lemon yellow paint right over here. And I'm gonna just start painting that on the top. And then without cleaning my brush, I'm going to switch over to my yellow ochre and I'm going to blend that kind of up into that lemon yellow and I'm just going to start carrying that bright yellow color down. about there. I'm going to clean my brush off and I'm going to switch over to my burnt sienna paint and then I'm going to blend that in coming down until we hit that horizon line. A little bit more paint. And then I'm going to take that Burnt sienna, just gonna tap it in, go up into my yellow, but I'm not gonna completely let it overtake that bright yellow color. And then with some paper towel. I am going to dab a circle out of the center and I'm gonna make this our sun. So I'm gonna fill this up with water and I'm just going to blend that circle. And then I'm gonna drop in some of that bright yellow again just to make this a very bright focal point and then I'm going to add some of that darker burnt sienna around it and then I'm going to take 
my brush, I'm going to completely clean it off and dry it off. And I'm just going to get some lines to kind of give this a bright feel. So I'm just pulling away some paint and then I'm drying it off so that I don't bring that paint right back to it. And I'm just gonna go in with some clean water around the horizon and just kind of blend that a little bit. feel like I've lost the vibrancy of my vibrancy in the paint. So I'm just going to give a little bit more of that toward the bottom. All right. And then while this dries, we are going to go in with our smaller brush. So I'm going to switch over to my size six round brush. And I'm just gonna go into some gray paint that I've already mixed up for another tutorial or painting that I did. It's just Payne's gray, really watered down. And I am just going to create some shadows coming off these trees. So I'm just bringing that gray shadow in the direction the sun would be behind them. I'm gonna fix this one. I don't like where that one went. I want this one to come this way. Give it this natural feel. Just like that. And then I'm going to add a little bit of that gray around the edges and toward this back area. All right, and now we are gonna let this completely dry and then we can take off our masking fluid. So now to take the masking fluid off, all you need to do is just kind of start rubbing up toward the masking fluid and it should just peel right off. And it's very fun to do. And then you'll see we have this nice, crisp white section that we're left with to work with. And I love how you're able to make your trees more uneven and just kind of imperfect. Another trick, if you don't have masking fluid, you can cut your washi tape in the shape of the trees and then lay that down and then paint over it. But I do find that that can be kind of harder to get the right shape with your washi tape. You might just get a really straight tree 
which can look good too. But for this painting, I was definitely going for a more loose feel. And it's hard to achieve when you are using that tape. All right, so now what we are going to do is we are going to switch over to our size two round brush. And we are just gonna go one tree at a time doing the exact same method. So we are going to just start by filling in the tree with clean water all the way up. You can use a generous amount of water just because we don't want our tree trunk to dry as we're working. But I will walk you through this first tree very in detail. And then I'm gonna speed up the other trees just because it can get a little tedious since we have five that we're gonna be doing. All right, and now that it's completely filled with water, we are gonna go into that gray paint we used for our shadows. And we're just gonna start tapping that color in kind of as a shadow to this tree. So you don't want it to be everywhere, you just kind of want to tap it in and let the water move it around. Just to give your tree less of a completely white feel. And then we're going to go in, even while that is still wet, we're gonna go back into our Payne's Gray paint. And we want this to be a nice, thick wash. And on one side of our tree, we're just going to very carefully paint in a dark line, letting it seep in. You can kind of use this line to sharpen up any edges that you didn't like that might have been created with the masking fluid. Just let it seep into that wet paint. And then we're gonna go on either side while this is wet still, and we're gonna create little circular lines. And this is gonna give our tree its shape and that texture that birch trees have. You can kind of just put random ones in the middle as well. Just kind of have fun with it. There's really no exact pattern to painting in these lines. Each tree is gonna look different and unique. The key though is really having that page already wet so it can really blend in and give it a very, very natural look. All right, so there is our first birch tree. I'm gonna do the exact same step with these four. So I'm just gonna do it in a sped up version just for sake of time and so that it's not too tedious for you. So now that our birch trees have completely dried, all we have to do to finish off this painting is just add a little bit of extra shadow to our snow beneath. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some clean water and since everything has already dried, I can just cover all of this bottom area with the clean water and it is not going to affect those shadows I already put in place. 
I am avoiding my birch trees because I don't want this extra shadow on them at all. I just want it on the snow around them. So I'm just filling in that entire snow space. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the lightest um, mixture of my sunset colors and I'm just going to drop them in around this snow just because that white snow would have that glow, that, ref that um, reflection of the sunset on it because it's so white. So I'm just tapping that in with the lightest mixture and I'm not gonna cover up the entire base. I want it to be very uneven, but I just want you to see the hints of those colors down there to really give it a natural feel, but also it's gonna keep a nice loose feel as well. So I'm just tapping that in all along the snow and because of that wet on wet technique, it is just gonna blend seamlessly into the white. All right, and then once this painting dries, you are done.